This conference will now be recorded. Hello guys, welcome to Kumar Consulting and uh, guys welcome back. So once again we are going to have a look on the next question. Uh, look at here guys, the next question is so related to the currency translation, look at here. The next question is what do you mean by translation ratio or it could be what do you mean by currency translation ratio what do you mean by foreign currency translation ratio or all i'm having like gives the same meaning so what do you mean by translation ratio guys now here for this you need to hope you will be able to remember the foreign currency setting guys which where i have covered i'll just show you i've already opened recipe here so now whenever we go for foreign currency setting guys i might have told you or might have explained you that first of all we are going to first of all before specifying the currency rates before specifying the currency rate what is happening we are going to specify the currency translation ratio say for example uh, okay so i always give example of tata motor so what we are going to give let's suppose here i'm going to give our exchange rate type m let's suppose usd versus inr Indian currency and here I'm going to give current date itself 27 and ratio 1 is to 1 always we give 1 is to 1 always we give 1 is to 1 save this now so and I'll once we give this translation ratio then only what is happening guys then we are going to give you the rate we are going to specify the rate okay now we'll do one thing click on inventory and here give a validity again 27th itself I'm going to give and here let's suppose USD and here INR so one USD equals to let's suppose how much INR guys let's suppose uh, 100 INR okay one USD equals to let's suppose 100 Indian currency now just save it so based on that if you post a transaction Look at here. If you're going to post a transaction here uh, in current date itself, so now here, what is happening, guys? Uh, give you a GL account. Okay. Any debit or credit we are going to take, and here only one USD. Here USD we are going to take. So everything is fine. Now just post it. Okay, so now we are going to have a look here. Display and we'll check the so one USD if you're going to display currency, here it is showing. Now here I'll tell you guys, now here what is happening. So in most of the most of the cases in most of the cases what is happening translation ratio we are going to specify one is to one itself okay one is to one itself but what is the rule of translation ratio i'll tell you what is the rule of translation ratio that i'll tell you now let's suppose here we are having usd versus indian currency usd versus multiple other currencies are there let's suppose right now so since our currency value is of course lower than USD, okay, but it is not comparatively, it's not huge in the sense like it's it's not uh, too much lower, okay. Of course it's lower, but it's not too much lower. I'll put a different example. Let's suppose we are having USD versus now there is a country called Iran, Iran, okay. Uh, uh, so if you talk about Iranian currency, it stands for, I guess, IRR. Yes, this is the. So guys, here, Indian USD versus, so one USD, one USD equals to, let's suppose, how much Indian currency, guys? It, it might be 65, 70, whatever it is, right? I have specified 100, so I'll keep 100 itself. Say, for example, this is not the original figure, but say, for example, but one usd equals to how much iranian currency guys if you're going to have a look on 
uh, Google, it will show around 41,000 some pages will be there or might be 42,000 rupees will be there. Now let's suppose even, I'll, I'll take the amount in round figure itself and I'll keep 40,000, okay? So what is happening guys, look at here, this value is huge value. This value is huge value, right? This value is huge value and if you are going to maintain this rate into SAP, then SAP is not going to accept because because what is happening, SAP is, why SAP is not going to accept guys? Because I'll show you the reason. Because here, after that, after that, even system should have a space to keep this five decimal places also, right? After decimals, five digits are going to be accepted. Okay, so there should be a space for this five this after decimal five digit space supposed to be there right so i'll just do one thing guys here okay so it should be like this i will make it like this okay so it should be like this okay so what about this one is it a, this much length supposed to be there i'll just come here and we'll have a look okay here right if I'm going to maintain the exchange rate for this USD versus Iranian currency, right? Iranian currency means, let's suppose, so 40,000, right? 40,000 I have given. And then here, let's suppose I'm going to give IRR, contract center. First of all, system itself is not accepting this. 40,000 is not accepting, right? System will accept if you're going to give 4,000, then press enter, system is going to accept. Why system is going to accept, guys? Because after that, we are having a space for this five, after decimal, five digits, space are there, right? So even here in exchange rate table, we are having certain limitations. That currency is till four digits only is going to be taken by, is just going to be considered, right? So then, what will happen then how we are going to if you are going to specify four four thousand here then what will happen right then this is not the correct picture it's not going to the, going to show you the correct picture so i'll show you now since here i'm not having configurations for iranian currencies guys so just assume that our indian currency prices itself our indian currency value itself is is like quite lower okay and one usd equals to forty thousand indian currency right one USD equals to 40,000 Indian currency. Okay, let's suppose here, I'm going to specify 40,000, but system is not going to consider. 40,000 is not going to be considered because here the length is too much, right? So system is taking 4,000. System is taking 4,000, right? And you save it. Now, system has taken one USD equals to 4,000 INR. So if you are going to post, if you are going to post the invoice here, then here system will show, if you are going to post one USD, system is going to show 4,000 INR in Indian currency. But what is happening guys? Here, here, 4,000, right? Okay. So here what is happening guys? Now, but the actual value is 40,000. So what is happening guys in this, Translation ratio, currency translation ratio, which shows the relationship between two currency. What kind of relation is there? One is to one or what? So now we are saying that now the currency relation is not one is to one, guys. Instead of it's not one is to one. Right now, what are, what we have given one is to one. Right? If you are able to see here, see here, guys, what we have given one is to one. Look at here not here guys not here here actually we have given one is to one right so now one is to one means system is going to calculate one is to one here we have given and here rate we have given let me remove this iranian currency it might be creating some confusion to you now save it so now here one is to one so whenever we are going to post a transaction okay whenever we are going to post a transaction then what is happening guys now here one USD equals to 4,000 Indian currency. 
right? But the requirement is one USD equals to forty thousand Indian currency. So this translation ratio is going to be changed here USD and here INR, right? So this translation ratio one USD versus here ten Indian currency. So what is happening, guys? If you are going to post a transaction like one USD, okay, one USD. Send here. Indian currency is going to multiply four thousand multiply ten. So system is going to calculate the correct figure. I'll show you guys here. I'll show you guys here. What we have given here. First of all, let me show you here. So here. USD versus INR, right? So one is to ten. Okay, and then what we have done, guys? We have specified the rate also. That is one USD equals to how much? Four thousand INR. So whenever we are going to post a transaction, now what is happening here? What is happening, guys? Then system is going to how system is going to calculate this four thousand multiplied ten, and then system is going to count the value. So I'll just do one thing, guys. Now we'll post the transactions. Once again, we are going to use FB50, and then we'll post the transaction. Okay, here USD, and then give you again this GL debit one USD itself, and here we are going to give. Okay, now. So this time, if you are going to post one USD, then what is happening? Just save it. System is going to show you how much. Click on display. System is going to convert this USD into local currency, in the sense Indian currency, and the amount supposed to be forty thousand. Look at here, guys, the magic. Look at here. Now system has taken forty thousand. So what is happening, guys? This first of all, the translation ratio. What is the use of translation ratio, guys? Translation ratio shows. The relationship between two currencies. It is showing the relationship between two currencies. That is the first thing. Second thing, in most of the cases, we are going to specify one as to one translation ratio itself. But if the currency value, if the one currency value is quite low or quite lower compared to the second one or compared to the other one, then in that case, what is happening, guys? We are going to specify a different ratio. It could be one is to ten. It could be one is to hundred. In, and and better instead of saying some definitions and all what is happening guys better to quote the example itself okay whatever example I have given USD versus versus Iranian currency likewise we are having other examples also right uh, there are multiple uh, what to say countries where the currency values are quite low why because of some in instabilities are there in that country uh, or else because of huge inflation rates are there in that country. So that is why their currency value is quite low, right? So, uh, like the recent example is there of Venezuela, where certain uh, what to say crisis is happening, and, and people are like like uh, one burger prices are also there in uh, some uh, lakhs or something, right? So now in that case, what is happening for such kind of countries? So their currency values are quite low, and if you have to, if you are going to specify. Uh, those currencies rates into SAP, then SAP is not having SAP till four digits. SAP is going to accept because after that, certain decimal places are supposed to be also space supposed to be there, right? So in that case, system is going to take only four digits. But if the currency value is like uh, it is there in forty thousand, fifty thousand, twenty thousands, in that case, what is happening, guys? Here the ratios we are going to get. Okay, that should become low. So now, what we are going to give? We are going to give the ratios. Okay, we are going to specify the ratio, translation ratio. So in translation ratio, we are going to specify either one is to ten, one is to hundred, as per our requirement, and then based on that, we are going to specify the rate here. We are going to specify the rate here. If we have given one is to ten, then what is happening, guys? Whatever the current rate is there. Okay. If currency ratio we have given one is to ten, and here one USD equals to forty thousand Indian currency, right? So forty thousand divided by ten. So now what is happening, guys? Look at here, the value becomes smaller, right? Or else, if you are going to specify here hundred, one is to hundred, 
then 40,000 divided by 100, so it will be 400 only, right? So this is how easily we are going to specify the rates in the exchange rate table, right? Let's suppose one Indian, one USD equals to 4 lakh Indian currency. In that case, what is happening, guys? Then in that case, we are going to specify 1 is 200 or is 1 is 2,000, right? So this is the major use of this translation ratio, guys. Hope you are able to understand what do you mean by translation ratio? Whatever I said, I've specified here, like currency translation ratio shows the relationship between two currencies, right? But in most of the cases, we specify the translation ratio one is to one. But if the both currencies are not comparable, for example, one currency value is having quite low or lower value compared to the other one. In that case, what is happening, guys? We are going to use a different translation ratio. It could be one is to 10, it could be one is to 100, and then you have to quote the example or else instead of saying these many things simply you can quote the example itself that if the currency prices are quite low and you can quote the example say for example this or this currency pair and you can give the example that if this is the price so if you are going to maintain that rate into sap sap is not going to accept because your the value is quite lower right it's there in five digits it's there in six digits here till four digits, digits only is going to be accepted because after that there will be certain place for the decimal space for the decimal places also right decimal digits also so in that case what is happening we are going to specify a different translation ratio it could be 1 is to 10 so what is happening if we are going to specify 1 is to 10 then whatever the currency value is there that is going to be divided by 10 so the value become lower and that price is going to be specified in the exchange rate table okay so this is what the use of currency translation ratio or foreign currency translation ratio during classes what is happening guys simply i used to say that you just specify one is to one here but this is the impact of this translation ratio if you're going to specify one is to ten then what is the impact i have shown you if you're going to specify one is two hundred what is the impact i have shown you guys practically here this is the use of translation ratio or foreign currency translation ratio that's all guys that's all in this session